So today we're going to take a look at part four of our ace pair flex scheme. If you haven't seen part one, two, and three, check the description for links to those videos. Those of you using a custom playbook like myself and want to take advantage of every play the formation has to offer, the formation and the custom is twin tight end chief. Today we're going to take a look at another play action play called PA pick crosses. This time though we're going to cancel the play action more times than not. The main setup for this play is to cancel play action and streak the far right tight end. The second setup is by leaving the play action as is and streak both outside players X and RB. And finally we can also be successful by streaking the far right tight end but leaving play action as is. Now that we've covered the run game, two great play actions and our go-to money route against off coverage defense, let's take a look at our money route against press coverage. This time though with more of a complete play. PA pick crosses really gives us four great options to throw the ball to. Now let's start with the best route in the game, which in my opinion is the comeback route. With the wide receiver playing in tight, it makes it that much easier for anybody to throw. Once we see press coverage, all we do is wait for the X receiver to get a couple yards upfield, pass lead to the inside, click on, and continue to hold the analog stick to the inside, press Y, and make the catch. Against man coverage, it's an absolute gimme. Against zone, it's almost as easy, you just need to be a little more careful with your read. It's usually just a matter of timing and depending on the type of zone in your area. Now the X receiver clearly is the main route on this play. It's one of many over effective routes in the scheme, which is really what we're focusing on most. Over effective routes in a wide variety of plays that we can hit in any area of the field, making it so our opponent is literally just guessing as to what's coming next. It's up to us to make sure that we're mixing up our play calling properly and reading not only the type of defense, but who our opponent is going to use or defend and how aggressive or safe he's playing. If he's aggressive, then we're going to play aggressive and we're going to open up the field more. If he plays it safe, then we're going to play it safe. That's how I personally approach it. Streaking the outside wide receiver and the outside tight end is a great way to take advantage of an aggressive defense. Two options deep from a play action that is really hard to get pressure on can easily go for six if called at the right time. If the deep routes end up being covered, then against man or zone, the two crossing routes underneath are a good bet to be open, which you're gonna see more in the footage that we're gonna show. Finally, let's not forget what the comeback route does to both man and zone defense, even more so with the crossing route potentially pulling down any zone that might get in the way of a completion. Using the play action with the comeback in this offense, when when we just run it as a whole, it's just really silly to try and stop. This really is the best route in the game in my opinion. Even when they try to make user plays, try to click on and make a catch, it's just a little too much. I absolutely love the comeback. I showed a video on how to throw this to outside receivers earlier in the year. It was a really popular video, so I'm also going to put a link in the description to that. If you don't exactly know how to throw the comeback route, you can check it out there. Okay, so based on what I've seen throughout all my games, the B receiver is the more efficient option between the two crossing routes. Just gets open more frequently for whatever reason, although I guess the fact that we do have our best, fastest wide receiver in that spot might be one reason why. Really, both are good options and don't need to be utilized only in the play action. These are great routes to hit when blocking the running back and just dropping back, even though you're seeing mostly play action in these examples. Now don't forget about pass leading up as the receiver runs through zones as well. So you can not only pick up more yards, but also avoid the route running into coverage. That might result in picks, it might result in getting hit and dropping the ball, things like that. So pass leading up is definitely a good idea as you see right there. The more we mix it up, the more success we're gonna have. But paying attention to our opponent's tendencies can't be overlooked. I've had moments where I'd run the play five times in a row because my opponent refused to change. So we just need to make sure that we're paying attention to the defense while running this scheme. And we're going to be much more effective. We're just going to pick what routes we want to use to attack what he's doing. I love this route because mixed with the X receiver on the left side of the field, it's extremely hard to defend in man or zone coverage. If it's man, we're going to hit X once he makes his cut back. And if it's zone, then we just get to choose. If the A route pulls down the zone defender, then we're going to hit X. If not, we're just going to hit A as he runs free underneath. Oh, and in case I forget, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips if you haven't done so already. 
And finally, this tight end is always going to be on a streak when running this play. Any other route will interfere with the two crossing routes. Now, we could put him on a smart routed in route if we wanted, but I always love the deep threat that must be respected. Oh, and remember, if you haven't seen the first three parts of the scheme, check the description for the links. I'll see you guys next time.